Apostle Femi Lazarus is a man raised by God to demonstrate his wisdom and authority to the last day church. He is the lead pastor of Sphere of Light Church and God told him years ago, that a time will come where my wisdom will be needed to navigate tough times in the body of Christ. Then I will cause your voice to be heard and all who pay attention to my word on your lips will not lack light and direction. He is a man sent from God, sent to raise God's end time armies. With Apostle Femi Lazarus, every minute counts as you listen attentively. When you say a thing, it comes to pass. There is no searching of your wisdom. There is no searching of your understanding. You are the most high God. We return all praise to you. We return all glory to you. In a moment, can we lift our hands and just bless the name of the Lord? And I, I need us to be deliberate about it. I need us to be very deliberate about it. Come on, do so in a moment. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. Like you, Lord. Like you, Lord. There's no Two more times. together for Jesus. Amen. You may please be seated. God bless you. Um, good morning, church. Okay. All right. So today I'm going to be wrapping up and I want us to please follow me keenly as we wrap up this subject on dealing with the root of bitterness. Let's turn our Bibles quickly to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews. 
Hebrews chapter number 12. Hebrews chapter number 12. We start the reading from verse 14. Hebrews 12 from verse 14. If you are there, say amen. All right. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail the grace of God. So I fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, thereby many be defiled. And I want us to pay attention to that. It is the one who is bitter that is troubled. That, that's the logic. Amen? It is the one who is bitter that is what? Troubled. Um, I, I, I took you from the roots. If you missed the first teachings, you have to go back to it. That to be bitter means to, to be coerced. To lose every sense of sweetness towards a person, towards a cause. To become sharp. Sharp not in the, um, not as precision, but sharp to mean something that can cause injury. You see. Um, when you are hot, you just want justice. And sometimes it's not just justice, but vengeance. A pound of flesh. Um, there's this book we read then, I think Merchant of Venice. One of you have read that book before. All right. <laughs> okay, Merchant of Venice. You want a pound of flesh. And in many cases, the offender is not even sorry in many cases. You see that? In fact, the offender considers it for you to think it's a privilege for him to hurt you. Let me tell you something. The reason why you have to take it to your own soul is because not all men are reasonable. You must understand that. Not all men are reasonable. You can't afford to... People hurt people because they are in pain themselves. How will anybody who is normal take a girl and rape her? The fellow is not fine. How will somebody who is normal bring out a gun and shoot somebody in the head? The fellow is not fine. How will somebody who is normal be rude? Sometimes these actions are ways people used to ventilate. A way of giving everyone around a measure of the pain they are already running with. You need to feel what I feel. The policeman whose salary is not being paid regularly wants the citizen to feel it. When you drive and they ask you for money as a gentleman, you fail to give as a gentleman, say, pack. And sometimes you just want to know I can waste your time because the person too is not what? Fine. What about in a marriage? Married with someone who is a perpetual offender. One who doesn't see anything good in you will even insult your family. How, how do you of how do you forgive people who don't stop offending? I, I've been dragged on many occasions <laughs> and called many names, but I really don't mind. 
Let's read that Hebrews 12, 15 again. And I want all of us to see it again. Hebrews 12, um, verse 15. If you are there, say amen. amen. Look at it. One, two, three, go. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. So bitterness is best killed at its root. And I'll tell you how. So we say, what about the ones we grew up with? The things. <laughs> ah. <laughs> See. You know, sometimes I put out something. I see people come to the comment section and speak like the junior brother of Jesus. You know, this life, don't just do this. Let's just live the right as a holy life. Let's just do this, 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 that, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know what rejection is? Do you know what it means to go through life and there's no one who has made out acceptance, including your own blood? Do you know the tendencies that comes with it? That in many cases, bitterness is not about forgiveness first. It is about healing first. You have to heal. And many times, let me tell you this, to heal from the trouble a person has caused you, you have to create distance. And that's what many don't want to hear. You have to create distance. Sometimes you have to walk away. Let me say this. There are marriages that I am sorry cannot repair. And as a pastor, I insist that it should not be repaired with I'm sorry. There's a need for people to sit down and ask questions. Why are you doing this to your wife? Why are you doing this to your husband? Why did you say this? Why did you say that? Because there are people who, who don't even know what it means at all. What people go through. Their emotions is numb. For your own sake, move on. It is not for their sake. The one who is locked in prison, the one who is crying, the one who is shedding tears, the one who is feeling the heat, is you. There are people who are too battered to even know that you are bruised. They are hurting you, but they too, they are not fine. Their life is also meaningless. Don't allow any root of bitterness spring up in you. I want to give very... Um, Simple but practical ways to handle bitterness. Number one, separate yourself from the cause. Write it in capital letter. Separate yourself from the cause. There, there are families that you have to, as a child, travel far from. In fact, you cannot even have a good marriage. If you marry from that home to your own spouse house, you cannot have a good marriage. So there, there are places that you have to first go far. Huh? Are you with me? And be treated. If you put somebody in a cage where there are snakes and the snakes strike, you can't treat the person in the midst of the snakes. You take the person out and remove the venom. Love is a commandment. The distance was not specified. So there are times that you have to love from afar. I love you, but proximity will injure both of us. I'm not saying don't restore fellowship. I love you sincerely. But if there will be someone that will arise from this home to change the narrative, it cannot be somebody who is a part of the problem. So there are times to detach. You know, people just talk about things. Eh, eh, eh. You know, people shall, you know, mouth now. 
his mouth. You know, there is a way you comment on an issue. You have just said, let me go through what they went through. So when next we make a post about it, you, you keep quiet. See, whoa, whoa, see me, oh, the way I am, I, I am wired with forgiveness. No, that's natural. There are situations that will exhaust that natural one that you will now need divine strength to know what we are talking about. See, me, I'm naturally a patient person. <laughs> That's, that's my nature. I don't cause trouble. Uh, have you seen where they exhaust patient people? And something speak within you. After one hour, you say, eh? Was I the one who just... When the Bible talks about um, Galatians 5, the fruit of the Spirit, love, patience, gentleness, none of those things is a natural fruit. It is the fruit of a mature, regenerated spirit. It is that gentleness there. It's not that one that I don't used to talk in class. That when they write name, noisemaker, they don't write my name. That, that, that's not the gen- Are you following what I'm saying? That's not the gentleness. Oh. <laughs> Let me not talk. Oh. Let me tell you this. You can, even Joseph, that his brother sold, the guy, the moment God lifted him, he didn't say, go and look for them more. Not because he was a bad guy. There are times that you need time and deliberate approach to heal. Then there can be a restoration. This kind of restoration is not a five seconds thing. No. And let me say this to you. If you are going through a healing process and you are sincerely praying to God for your mind and soul to heal your emotions so that there can be a restoration of affection in certain places, the fact that it is taking time doesn't mean you are a bad person. Sometimes the depth of the injury is deep. But make sure between you and God, heal. Are you following what I'm saying here? You can imagine a, let's say for instance, a father ate his daughter, ate her so bad. Now the girl is married. And the hatred won't see stop. But the boy now. And you are finding a way to still bring that same toxic mentality and inject into this home and scatter it. No, no, no. There are times that you have to say, I love you sincerely, but distance is a must. Let me tell you something. For some of you, preparing for marriage is not just preparing in character. No, no. Preparing for marriage is to treat certain family members that there's, there's, there's a gap. There are some of you, if you don't start building that now, your home will become worse than the dysfunctionality you grew from. It is you growing up and every blessed day of your life choosing to live by example. This is the boundary. There are homes that Mother-in-law came for Omugo, and that's the end of peace in that home. Just one statement, they never knew peace again. There are times that distance is a must, but love is compulsory. Is that okay now? See, let me tell you this. Don't overrate yourself. No, no, I can't take it. I can't take it. No, that's how you have been taking it, and now you have gone bad. The whole thing you are taking is become it cancers in your heart. You are not fine anymore. You are not Superman. You are not Superman. Detach yourself. Heal. Come back. And there are times that where to come back to is bad, so uh, we keep it from afar, but I love you. When we get to where we we'll both find out how we love each other, but we cannot. Uh... Are you following what I'm saying here? Forgiveness is a must. But there are times to start with what? Distance. Number two, shut the door to every unnecessary knowledge. Let me use that word. There are certain knowledge um, that is not necessary. There are things you don't need to know about. 
Um, Apostle Lazarus, you need to see there's this man of God that hates you so much. It's none of my business. Maybe the... What I've not really heard people say they hate is water. But it will amaze you that people would say, I don't just like water. If you don't like water, who am I? Apostle Lazarus, you need to see what this person is saying about you. It is none of my what? Business. <laughs> you don't need certain knowledge. You don't need it. You don't need it. You don't need certain explanation. Let me explain. Let me, no, no, let me say my part. No, no, no. Even your explanation will trap you. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 26, verse 20. Proverbs 26, verse 20. Look at this. Can we read this together? One, two, three, go. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, strive cease. Can you give me this in message translation? It will shock you. Message. Now look at it. One, two, three, go. The fire goes out. When the gossip ends, the quarrel dies. Sometimes you know too much. Mm, and it's a sign that you too, you have a problem. You, 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 are, you are searching people's phone to see what, what have they said about me. What, what did they type? What was this person saying? Eh? What, what does she feel about me? What? Usually that is because your self-perception is weak. And your self-esteem is battered. So let me tell you this. There is a way you feel fly when people praise you. The devil is also aware that you can be destroyed through criticism. Oh, Apostle Lazarus, amazing man. Amazing. It's your business. Because my topic tomorrow can deal with you. So it's your business. It's your business. I'm, I, I, I just like him. You better be careful. You better. Be, no, is it true? So even myself, I'm not sure what I think about myself like that. I just like him. He's so, he's so cool. Be careful. Because we are dealing with fundamental issues. If you are found as a culprit, the message will deal with it. Oh, yes. I've seen women I jack my teaching and use those con men till the day I face women. And I think it's becoming a pattern now. Some people went to take my message and say, hey, he's talking to this political person. He say, say he's sweeping. It's people's business. The day you to attack you too. That, 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 just, to... Let me tell you, any system that you see strife inside, somebody is empowering gossips. And you hear they said this, they said that, they, 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 this one said this about that, this one. You cannot live your life like that. There will be pain in your house. One of the things God has taught me to deal with my heart, listen to what I'm saying, is to be careful what my conclusion is about people. You cannot be bitter towards a person until your conclusion is bad. So when people are doing things, the devil is trying to attack your conclusion. He's trying to give you perspective about the person. The moment you conclude this person is bad, there's nothing good the person can do again. And you believe. Sometimes we believe gossip about people because the gossip seems to partner with our hatred towards them. Somebody that you already hate, they now say, ah, you know, I really don't mind. Hmm? I really don't mind. You know, there are, there are people who are, who are believing and waiting that say, um, all these fair of light church, all these issues, everywhere will scatter now. For, for where? Uh, uh, Lazarus, see, let me tell you something. If you are going to live a life as one who carries God's glory, you must guard your heart. The Bible said, not with a part of diligence, with all diligence. That is, it is important what enters. It is important what can form perspective. It is important what can color your view. It is important how you see people. It is important. There are times I wake up in the night and I keep telling myself, this person is a good person. I don't care. This person is good. This person is good. I will walk with this person. This person is nice. This person is kind. 
Because, listen to what I'm saying. The root, the seed of thought is words. I need to speak to myself to hear it. For my mind to know that I refuse to partner with the devil in believing that this person is bad. Before you know it, every good people that can change your life has been walked out of your life. It is a pattern. It is a pattern where you see small things. Once I go see small things, I'm done with you. See small things, I'm done with this person. Small things, I'm done. Before you know it, there's no one in your life that God can use to help you. Be careful. Just cut off, cut off. There's something called emotional intelligence. That you have to learn to build coping mechanism with people. Are you following what I'm saying What did I call it? Coping mechanism. You will have to inform yourself. Oh. Nobody will do it for you. That I choose to see this person as good. If not, the little party you have will be over in no time. And you wonder, why can't we greet each other again? Sometimes the problem is not even the issue. Sometimes it is the gossip that follows. What makes many relationships irreconcilable is not even the matter. It is those who are cashing out on the matter. Those who have been waiting for this matter to come. And let me tell you this. Anyone who gossip to you about people will gossip to people about you. It is a matter of time. A gossip is a gossip. Today they have this side, tomorrow they have that side. Somebody said, when you sell your neighbors cheap, even the buyer won't trust you. They should not trust you. Are you following what I'm saying here? Ah. Somebody, maybe you just went to me, Pastor Mimi, and say, Pastor Mimi, ah, you won't believe it. Say what? Say, Apostle. We need to see what we saw. Ah. Let me share a story with you. I don't even know. I, I, I heard it. I can't remember who shared with me. Somebody took a husband to be, took the man to the family house, said, This is the person I want to marry. Everybody celebrated, Oh, you are welcome, our in law, blah, blah, blah. Later that night, our closest friend messaged the guy, Are you aware that the girl you want to marry has a child? Is that the person you want to marry? The guy said, describe the child. Male. How tall? This tall. The guy said, thank you, that's my child. <laughs> Who are the people you have lost in your life? Not because of what they did, but because of what you had from a tail bearer. That's why I'm, I'm see, we, our, our world, people, people, people are more brutal than the devil. God forgives, but we say the internet doesn't forgive. Who are those on the internet? People. If God brings out somebody from nightclub now, that they know this person as somebody who is a professional, whatever you call it now, and this person is out and serving God, who are those who first cause the person now? People. The same people who need forgiveness will not give it. God brought somebody. Let me ask you a question. Let me check your weight. If somebody comes out now as a pastor and say to you, I used to be a gay, but now I've repented. Can you disciple the person? And say, um, ah, ah. The kind of people I've discipled. Uh, the worst case I've dealt with somebody who is dealing with immorality, but this one now. Ah, ah. You see that now. While you need the forgiveness of God, there are people you have also concluded that are irredeemable. It is the nature of our world. And we bear tales about... There are people who right now are almost miserable, not because of what they did, but for rumors people are spreading about... Do you, do you know that guy? Do you know that guy? He's such a very stupid guy. You need to hear him once to know how notorious he is. He's one of the worst human beings I've met. He's, and so I say it's true. Check what happens to your heart when you hear people say things about other people. 
check your conclusions. If your conclusions believe that those people are so, without hearing their parts, number one, that is one of the acid tests of foolishness. It is one of the what? Acid tests of what? There are people who want to ma- a girl, they like the girl who, until their friend comes to say, that girl, we have slept with the girl. Then the same friend likes the girl and go and marry the girl. Be careful of tail bearers. Be careful of getting information about things that is none of your business. There, there are people who are so inquisitive. They want to know what everybody is saying about them. What are they thinking about me? Eh? What, what, what she say? The moment they say somebody has something to say about the, uh, there are organizations that have been destroyed with tail bearers. They employed one employee who now have rumors about everyone just so that the person can take their position. Let me tell you this. Nobody can successfully gossip in your organization until they have seen that you have low self-esteem. Every gossip cash out on your low self-esteem. Because for you to believe what they are saying, the gossip will have to first massage your own ego. I have seen that you are a good master. I've never sat under a boss that is as kind as you. He adjusts his suit. I say, not, if not for yesterday night, you need to hear what I saw Nick saying. What they said you are. I was wondering, is this my boss? This is the man I've served with. I know him to be a good man. Right now, the man is thinking about to write a resignation letter and tell the girl to resign for something that he has not seen the sign in her life. Are there no homes that have been destroyed because of what you now believe an outsider over your own spouse? Somebody said, we saw your wife, this, this, that. Say, my God, I know she's a very useless woman. And when people see that you don't really love your spouse, they will destroy your meat. You, you both of you, the more they will. They will come in, they will ravage the both of you and mess you up. There are people who need to divide your home to spoil it. Mm. The weary of tail bearers. When you take away wood, the fire goes out. If you remove gossips in any environment, the strife will cease. Be careful. Number three now. How do you deal with bitterness? Forgive. Forgive. This is... Um, this is a very sensitive word to forgive. Everybody lift up your right hand and say, I forgive today. <laughs> so, um, Pastor Tumiche, please come. So what does it mean to forgive? Um, Nakale, please stand behind him. I want to release the anointing. Now, look at this. Stand, is your pastor, if he falls down. So let me show you what it means to forgive. I want to release the anointing. So I'm going, and intentionally, I bruised him. You see that now. He looks at me. Can't you see what you have done? I say, that's, that's, your, that's the business of the king of your village. Go and tell the king of your village that I pushed you. Nonsense. Get out of my sight. To look at this person and say, just go. That's maturity. It takes having a divine nature to have the opportunity to retaliate and choose to say, go. That you forgive doesn't mean you are weak. It means you understand something, the offender doesn't understand. Listen to what I'm saying. That you forgive doesn't mean the offender has changed. That you forgive doesn't mean the offender has repented. That you forgive doesn't mean that the, the offender will not repeat it. So I, I see stories like, how do I forgive a man who keep hurting me? Let me tell you something. If I come this first time, like I did the other time, and I push him, he falls, stand again. I come again the second time, I push him again, he falls. I come again the third time, I push him again, he falls. Who is the fool here? Him. You know why? You must get away from the level where you can be emotionally reached. Let me tell you what that means. 
What that means is, if you will not stop doing this, I choose to outgrow you. How do I outgrow you? Keep doing what you are doing, but you will not meet the same puppet who will go back and cry. I now understand that you must have a problem to be like this. Somebody is talking to you and talking you down in a way that wants to bring out pain and poison from you. You must learn to see the person for who they are. This is what you want to bring out of me. Because I know if you are too much in pain, you will not see behind, beyond the smoke screen. Talking you down, talking you down. Do you know how foolish you are? How stupid you are? How condescending your behavior is? How this, how unwise, how blah, 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 blah. This is what you want. That I will always sit down here and Saul can cry. You want to have a man or a woman who is deranged and broken. Since you have refused to change, I'll get out of that zone where you can do that. Come back and talk again. But it's not the same old me you will meet. You are still saying the same word. Ah, there comes a time that let me tell you, people who curse and talk people down with words, what ought them the most is to see that you are not ought. Yeah. Are you not the one I'm talking to? You talk, you mean, you mean all the things I'm saying? You, you are looking at me as if a dog is barking? What are they saying? I'm pressing a sensor, trying to get a brutal, an emotion from you. Why are you not giving me? You used to be my pupette. I know the key to press and you break down. If they will not stop pressing that key, refuse to break down. Every time the person, you know what they're about to do. You know what they're about to say. Talk, say things, painful things. Outgrow them. I shared my story with you. A woman who has taught me the most all my life called me for 16 minutes, was raining curses as a teenager. I was saying things. I removed the phone from my ears and placed it on my bed. When she was done by herself, I'm sure she must have said hello, 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 hello. Network on, I don't care. She ended it herself. So I called her back after about an hour. And I said to her, I said, I know the reason why you are shouting. And I know the reason why you are talking and saying the things you are saying. I said to her, you are afraid of me. Yeah, what do you mean? I said, you are afraid of me. I said, you know that the hand of God is upon my life and it will lift me up. And you are afraid that I will remember all the things you have done since I was growing and I will afflict your children. But you don't know who I am. I love you and I love them with my entire life. The woman broke down in tears. That is what it means to take your emotions away from rich. Outgrow them and you see that they are children. I know with all these things, someone is saying, but this person must answer his case before God. That is between him and God. But guess what? The same way you repented, understand though, the same blood that saved you is on ground to save him. And it is in God's interest that he will not go to hell. Are you following what I'm saying here? So that you will not say, I forgive you, but I'm waiting for you in eternity. <laughs> say, I, I forgive you, I forgive you, but I, I, I will see him born in hell. So one day I'm going to stand at the bosom of Abraham and see him cry for water. Him, my brother, you have not forgiven. You have not forgiven. Let me tell you this. Forgiveness is not complete until you don't want, you no longer want the person to go through the kind of pain you went through. It is a deep matter. Think of the biggest pain right now in your life. All the things you remember that followed you from your childhood stage down to adulthood. The statements they said about you, how they said the shape of your head was, how they called you a witch, how they called you different names, how they, you went to a pastor who prayed for your family and singled you out and said, this one amongst your children is a witch. How one particular uncle that the family trusted will open your clothes at night and try to touch you. Remember all those pains that affected the way you perceive men, the way you see life, the way you see people. Remember, put the offender side by side with the pain in your mind right now. You know one thing about the mind is, 
Whatever it is you think about, the flood of emotion that comes with it comes also. So you look at that person, you are boiling in your heart. And saying this year has gone by, everybody still called this person daddy. But nobody knows person the predator. Put the person side by side now in your mind. And say, true Christ, that strengthens me, I forgive you. The person may see called following thee and say, useless child, how are you? Ah, the version of me that will be hot died yesterday. Are there forgiveness that comes with tears? I tell you. There are forgiveness that takes weeks. You will cry. So you will now begin to see how deeply rooted you are. Have you seen where somebody has boil and they are trying to get out the pus? That is how it is when you are trying to get out pain from your mind. Something really bad is going on there. They say, I post to that people who are not worthy of forgiveness. You forgive them not because they are worthy of it. You forgive them because you have to forgive them their trespasses even as your father who is in heaven forgives you also. When will you be free from that prison? They are not the ones inside. It is you. Unfortunately, many of these people are so insensitive that every blessed day, they don't even think about your existence. And they still go about hurting others. You get out of that prison for your own sake. But if you know, listen to what I'm saying. If you have an idea of what people have had to endure, a woman is there knowing that the husband is eating on her best friend, and the best friend will still greet her. Knowing that the husband is trying to sleep with the younger sister and she keeps it in her heart. Knowing that the man is trying to do this and she's wondering. You say, how do I forgive such kind of man? This man has made me a bitter woman. He has made me deranged. Yeah. Or, or a woman who has never honored her husband, not for a day in her life. When she looks at him, all she sees is a man she wants to hurt. She, he reminds her of all the pain and the agony she has been through. And the man is saying, if I'm your husband, where's my honor? But honor can't flow where there's pain. <sighs> Some of you will need to call people today, today, and say, I forgive you. Their response is, you, you useless. What, what do you mean? You see, this is Momo. You still say they forgive me. Who do you say you be now? don't worry I forgive you just go you are the victim not me I let go you can never truly heal until you take that step of forgiveness and sometimes to seal it up you have to tell the person to their face I forgive you some children will have to go and look at their father and say for the pain you have caused me and all my younger ones for the pain you have caused my mother, I forgive you. Some children will have to go and tell their mother for abandoning us, for all the things you have done, for all the things, this, this, the way you were not there, the way you hated me in particular, I forgive you. God wants them too to live a good life. While God is busy on your matter, he's also busy on their matter. He's trying to find, and many times, the fellow who began this bitterness is not even them. Is the father of their own father. And the thing has been passing from one person to another. Lift your right hand where you sit. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Uh, you, are, you are not saying it well the way I need you to. From today, I forgive and I let go. Can I give you a minute to think about someone and bring the person on the table of your heart right now call their names it may cost you tears it may be that the only way you are coping with life is never to remember these people but now you have to you have to summon them to the court of your heart and say Lord I let go I receive grace today to let go this matter 
let go of this matter. I receive grace for this matter to die a natural death. I forgive. If you feel you have to kneel down, kneel. If you feel you have to, it doesn't matter. The church is God's way of reaching us. It is a spiritual clinic. Take a posture you know you understand that reflect exactly how you feel. Some of you will have to go and burn certain journals today. The journals where you write all the things that pained you, where you chronicle all of them. You will read them again. The memories come back. Some of you will have to go home, pick the journals and tear it to pieces and say the things of the past will I remember no more. I let go. I choose to begin a new life today on the bill of God's grace. I choose to begin a new life on the bill of God's mercies. I choose to begin a new life. I, I, I let go. In Jesus' name we're praying. Look up everybody. In Genesis chapter number 3, when God came down, and he saw that both Adam and his wife were naked. God said, who told you that you are what? Naked. That was the first abuse man was exposed to. Verbal abuse. For someone to look at you and call you what you are not. That was what the devil did. And many times it runs deep. There are things people would now have their money, working for their money, have their family, but they are still chains. They know it is there, and they know it is a product of upbringing. The girl is so fine, everybody can see it. The boy is handsome and industrious, but will never believe that he is. When they say, my God, you look so beautiful, say, really? And in her mind, what she remembers all the time is the words of the stepmother. You look like whatever she calls her. And you look at your life and say, this, these people have caused me so much pain. In order for them not to have taken your past and also take the future, let them go now. They have affected the past. They've done strange things to you. They've messed up your mind. Don't give them the opportunity to also affect your future. That your children will not see you as a bitter father. Explain to you that the reason why you are doing the things you are doing is because you are in pain. Now they look at all that. You have a good heart. You are loving. You are trusting. You are genuine. You are kind. But when you are hot, you don't know how far is too far. Everybody must be served around. But you truly love people. And now the perception of people about you is bad. That is a sign you need to change your strategy. What you are doing is not working. And if you continue like that, the only narrative there will be about you is that you're a witch. And there will be no one to defend you because all those who should would have been bruised by you too. So what do you do? Get up. Forgive. Don't make anybody make you a fool. And don't make a fool out of yourself. This life is not that nice. There are dangerous people around. Are you following what I'm saying there? Are, are you aware there are people you know in your family as bad? Meanwhile, they are the nicest. They are the nicest. Everybody believed this sister. Maybe the fellow is now even trusting God for a child. They say, no, no, it's God of the wickedness. Meanwhile, this fellow is not wicked. This fellow is just pained. They have done things to her in that family that it will take growing up for everybody to understand what she has endured. But this is the narrative. The bad witch the wicked woman, the this and the that. And she has allowed it so because she is not managing the emotions well. You must forgive. You must. Lift your hands again and say, Father, again I represent my heart before you. Help me heal. Help me forgive truly. Help me. At this point, I really don't think I have the capacity in myself to. At this point, I don't really think I have the strength in myself to. Maybe you are here, somebody has dented your image. 
there's been character assassination you don't even know where to start from and you have given up now since they have destroyed my image let me just do the bad things too who cares anymore no 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 you won't go that route you won't go that route and I want us to truly pray I want us to truly pray you might see a man out there who is just crying like a child no 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 it is the move of the spirit sometimes you need to vent sometimes the tears are necessary because a new beginning is here please cry just leave him look up when you fail to forgive and you are dealing with manipulative people you become the ultimate victim both before God and men God knows my heart knows how good I am sometimes you too you have are you following what I'm saying here both before God and men I choose to walk in wisdom I choose I will not respond to this issue the way it is coming. I will be wrong. I choose to see it in a different dimension. I choose to embrace grace. I choose. I choose. If there are people that you need to call, call them. This is not an altar call. But there are some of you who actually know that the strength to do what you are doing on your street is not, on your seat is not there. I should actually be out before the Lord and cry myself out. Nobody will hold you down. I've carried this pain. I've carried this burden. I've carried this anger since I can remember. I come before you, Lord. And I lay it down. If you know you have to be here, be here right now. Nobody cares about, nobody's going to hold you back. I bring out my pain, my body, my trouble, my trauma. The bitterness of my soul. I bring them out. I can't go on like this anymore. I can't. I lay them at the altar. Pick any spot you want. I lay them at the altar. I choose to trust you, Lord. I choose to trust you. I am no longer seeking for vengeance. No. No. I embrace peace. I'm no longer seeking for vengeance. No. No. Shake up the dust that has gathered on you for so long. Step out of the darkness of shame you have wrapped yourself in. There is hope for a tree that is cut down. Because at the scent of water, it shall spring back to life again. Igu, you are a soldier in the army of God. And the host awaits your response to the clarion call. It's time to shake off the dust. The balm of Gilead is here. And is here to truly help you heal. He's the lily of the valley. He's here to help. Yes. He's here to help. And sometimes the person you have really not forgiven is yourself. How did I make this mistake? How did I allow myself go there? How did I allow myself do this? Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Sometimes you are angry at the society, pained by the church. I don't want to have anything to do with church again. I don't want to have anything to do with Christians again. But really, you let go. There's somebody saying the church killed my mother. 
the church did. She could have walked out from that abusive marriage, but they kept saying this till she died. That's why I'm angry. Forgive. It's been how many months now? It's been how many years now? Forgive. My younger brother died. We prayed all the prayers we could pray. He could not come back to life. I'm angry. Forgive. As long as there is bread in our nostrils, I can bet it that we will not have answers to all our questions till we see him face to face as he is. Then will the deepest questions of our hearts be heard and the deepest longings of our heart be satisfied. While we are in this world, the Bible said we will have tribulations. We will face problems. We will be accused wrongly. We will be lied against. We will be hated. People that you have helped will manipulate people against you. But he said, be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. So when we are here outside, we are not here because we are weak. No. We are here because we lean on his strength. We are here because we have come to the end of ourselves. We are here because we've come to the end of our rope. We are here because this is the last hope. This is the last hope. <sighs> that you will heal your children, Lord. That you will heal, Lord. Heal marriages. When you look at your spouse now, you don't even know what to see. You don't know what you see. All you know is that you are not seeing the person you fell in love with. No. You are only clouded with the pain. Forgive. Forgive. Where do I go from here? My reputation has been damaged. My image has been scattered. What do I do with my life now? Forgive. Start from there. Somebody promised you marriage only for you to find out that you were the only one in the relationship. Forgive. He's left your life now but keeps saying bad things about you. Forgive. That is where your journey truly starts from. Forgive. name we are praying um, those of you in front do you mind I agree with you in prayers let me agree with you in prayers if you can stand please stand let me agree with you in prayers and if you know you actually ought to be out you can join let me share a story with you I shared the story before of a man that um, his wife died at while the marriage was still young and they had just a girl and the man vowed that he will not remarry 
but all the affection he has for the wife, he will channel all the affection to the girl and train the girl um, till she becomes somebody in life. When the girl brought a man home to show the father that this is the man I want to marry, the man begged him, this girl is my life. She's my everything. Don't beat her. If she does anything to you, report her. She's my life. And it was like the guy went on to do the exact opposite. He will beat the girl. He will bruise her face. They are to package her several times. And the father held him. Held the guy in his heart. And after a while, he became very sick. They did everything they could. They prayed. It was just swelling. They prayed, they fasted. It was swelling. Till a man of God prayed for him and said, there's somebody you have not forgiven. Say it's true. He invited the daughter's husband. Already at that point, the daughter was already back to living with him. And he held the guy and was shaking and crying. Just say one word. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. And what they noticed was that the wedding ring the old man was wearing just fell. What happened? And the cause of holding the guy, he shrank. He shrank back. The devil is so brutal that despite your pain, he can even inflict you with sickness. Because unforgiveness is you violating a law. Lift your hands. I decree today that you receive grace. Every injury in that heart is healed. I ask that you receive divine enablement and the spirit of boldness. To let go this deepest issue in your heart. That the knowledge of God that passes understanding will keep you. And his grace will preserve you. It will help your heart and mind and you will receive perfect healing in the name of Jesus. I ask that anything that you are currently suffering as a result of what has been done against you, the Lord himself will help you. It will help you recover in totality in the name of Jesus. It is done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It is done. It is done. Whatever step you have to take from here as the Lord leads you, go ahead and do it. Thank you, Jesus. You may go back to your seat. Thank you, Lord. Have you been blessed today? Let's put our hands together for Jesus. The message you just listened to is sponsored by the friends and partners of Femi Lazarus Apostolic Ministries Ecumenical, Flame. To partner with Flame, kindly make use of these account details. 2215-005289-UBA.